Now this is more like it. So last week I decided I was going to become a nihilist and chose five games to accompany me on that philosophical journey. You can see that here. Nihilism is far too goth though. Spring is in the process of springing, so I'm looking for a philosophy that's a bit more groovy, that's a bit more in keeping with the spirit of the sap rising and the rabbit multiplying like a Ructalagus cuniculus. You know, a bit more fun and shaggy with much less void contemplation. So I've decided to plump for the most fun of all the philosophies. That's right, hedonism. I mean, life is short. Why should we burden ourselves with cares and worries when we can just snort, apply and insert everything we need to keep us happy? Think of all those idiots jogging and eating healthy food. I mean, you're still gonna die, moron. Do some bloody donuts with the rental car before you return it. If I don't die with my exhaust pipe completely shagged, I would have considered it a life misspent. That's hedonism, baby. This, of course, includes games. So here is my list of indispensable titles to ensure you have a good time all the time. So set fire to your running shoes, throw your broccoli at the nearest cat, grab a bit of what you fancy, and let's have some fun. God, do I really have to be like this all the time to be a hedonist? I'm half knackered already. If was to have a symbol, it would be the dildo. That's why board games have become a hedonist dream palace over the last decade. Open a box now and you'll find yourself smacked in the face by all of the plastic dildos just waiting to be released from the shrink wrap. Nothing highlights this trend of utterly pointless success than the new version of the Euro classic Castles of Burgundy from Board Gaming's Dildo King's Awaken Realms. I ask you, what's the point of the old version now? It's all just cardboard and tokens, not a bloody sex aid in sight. Who cares that it was a perfectly tailored game that everyone can afford? I mean, how can I demonstrate that I have all of this disposable income with that shit? The new version now, now that's more like it. I want my midweight Euro game to be a temple to and of plastic. Plastic tiles, plastic player pieces, plastic rule books, and there, shining in the middle of the board, the most pointless dildo in gaming, desperately trying to shag the overhead light. Does any of this vulgar excess improve the game though? Does it bollocks? That's hedonism, baby! Planning. That, my friends, is for weenies. If you're a real hedonist, you don't plan anything because that kind of thinking is a real downer. So what if it means you find yourself at the bottom of a dried up canal bed with your pants up a tree and your nipples attached to a rather put out badger? That's hedonism, baby! Thunder Road Vendetta is the lesson you need to teach you that planning is boring and if you do it, you have zero riz. Thunder Road is a brilliant evocation of the kind of road races you find in films like Mad Max. There is no better game to conjure up the smell of petroleum and apocalyptic abandon. Sure, you could plan your way through the race, try to avoid the obstacles and come out victorious at the end, but why would you do that? Unless you were interviewing for the job of Lord Mayor of Laneville, and none of you watching this want that job. No way. What you want to do is shoot everybody else's car, bomb them with your helicopter, and make them crash into the ravines at the side of the track. This game is the most fun you can have with toy cars without needing an extraction tool. Will those same things happen to you though? Bloody right they will. And that's the point of this riot of a game. Smash things up. That's hedonism, baby! hedonists, I love a good scrap. Unfortunately, I have the physical capabilities of an asthmatic dormouse, so I choose to fight on a board. Not only does chaos in the old world allow you to have a good fight, but it does it in the most over-the-top hedonistic way imaginable. Now get on this. The game board is stretched out human skin. There is blood everywhere and you can, like, teleport. Then you have the gods you're playing as. Bloody hell. You have Nurgle, the god of disease who loves to infect everything and was super popular a couple of years ago. Then Zinch, the god of deception, and who doesn't love a good lie now and again? There's Korn, who gets off on buckets of blood, and Slanesh, who loves a good shag. 
Chaos in the Old World is a flawless fighting game that is all action right from the start. You could indulge yourself in the worst excesses of your desires, then pack the game away and have a little nap, because after all of this indulgence you might need one. I'm gonna carry on through though, because that's hedonism, baby! think that having a dry Euro game about flogging wine in the Roman Empire would be the last game to make this list. But before you stop the video, I have two words for you. Endorphins. Those chemicals that drench the brain and make you feel brilliant. It's like drugs, but totally free. Well, Concordia produces more free brain drugs than any other game I know, and what could be more hedonistic than free brain drugs? There's just something about the way this game is designed. It is just so perfectly put together. It has the simplest of premises. Play a card and do what it says, but the aftershocks of that simple decision are felt throughout the whole play of the game. This is a complex Euro game that through its masterful design has been made palatable, and the satisfaction in playing it is tangible. It is tangible in shining eyes, it is tangible in vibrant post-game discussion, it is tangible in the tingles you get all over your body after a game of Concordia. This is one of the best games ever made, and perfect for the hedonist, because you'll never enjoy anything as much as this. God, all this talk about chemicals is wearing me out. I'm not, I'm not sure about hedonism, you know. I'm not sure my knees can take it. Hopefully, I can get through this last one before I collapse. Frankly, I'm knackered. Hands down, Telestrations is the most riotous and rambunctious fun you will ever have around a table. This is a productionization, real word, of a classic folk game, and it is pure hilarity. As long as you bin the rules, don't look at the scoring system, and confine yourself to drawing <laughs> Telestration allows the wildest excesses of your id to run free. I played this at a convention last month with a couple of people who were very wary, and by the end they were aching because they'd laughed so much. Choose a word, and ask the table to draw it. So simple, and yet such a perfect way to explore the darkest and most puerile corners of the human brain. This game goes perfectly with a few drinks, and the desire to shock the table. This game appalls all of the players around the table in just the right ways. If you've never played this, you have to. With my game group, and late at night. You'll only regret it slightly. You know? Too much fun can be a drag. I mean, I'm absolutely wiped out, so bear with me while I get through this last bit. Like the video and that, sub if you want to buy some merch at someeatball.com to wipe up all the bodily fluids. Also, like these lovely people, you can go to patreon.com forward slash 5 g d to help me pay for my detox. Right, I'm off to sit in a darkened room with a cold compress on my crotch. Honestly, I think hedonism is far too much for me.